Welcome back to the MBH Podcast, Money Buys Happiness, Season 4, Episode 8. 10. 10? Yeah. Why does it say 8? I don't know. Okay, Episode 10. See, that, that's why, <laughs> that's why I'm, I gotta stop doing that. But anyway, I'm here. just stop doing that. I know, I know, I know. I got a fucking broken arm today. Yeah, if you guys can that, see, that's, your excuse. that's my yeah. excuse. Let yeah. me live. Let me yeah. live, okay? But listen, today we have an extremely interesting guest. We're super excited to get him on because uh, he just talks about a lot of things that probably don't get enough attention or don't get as much attention as they should. Kashif Khan, did I say it right? You're close. Close? You're almost there. How, yeah. what, what is it? Kasha. 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 But guess what? Kasha. I grew up as Kashif. Okay. It's something about the war. I don't know the way it's the called. Way it's yeah. 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 Well, Kashif. Yeah. I gave up after. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll, I'll reset. Kashif Khan, the CEO and founder of the DNA company. How are you, man? Awesome. Man. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. Out, yeah, man. yeah. Nice We're excited to have you. Uh, dude, you, you just, you're doing so much cool shit. Uh, we, we just wanted to give our, our, our listeners, our viewers, some you know, more value um, and, and, and give them an opportunity to hear what you have to say, talk about your company, what you've been up to, and, and kind of how you know, it affects everybody. So with that being said, maybe for anybody who doesn't know you, a little intro on who you yeah, are, sure, what sure. you do. So I don't, I don't come from the space, first of all. Right? Okay. It's something that I discovered through my own health. You know, mm-hmm. I'm now 41. Uh, I looked a lot older seven or eight years ago because you know, I wasn't in the best shape. Uh, and Really what happened was, in I did well in Toronto on my entrepreneurial journey, everything was fine, except for my health. That fell apart in my late 30s, which reminded me of what I saw when I was growing up, which uncles that were depressed, literally suicide, one of my cousins, there was addiction problems. And so I started talking to people that I knew in business circles, like, how, what do you do? Right? Yeah. What clinic do you go to? Can I pay someone to fix me? You know, that kind <laughs> yeah. of stuff. Yeah. And literally, I used to have to leave the office with like migraine problems. I was completely debilitated. My partner would drive me home yeah. vomiting, and I didn't even know why. Wow. Interesting. So what I learned later was genetically, I'm actually missing a major detox system. Don't even have it. Wow. Right? And most genetic testing companies can't tell you this because they test for what's called a SNP. It's like a spelling mistake in a gene. Okay. Uh, that won't catch this. Yeah. Right? So I literally don't even have the gene. Forget about the spelling mistake or what version of it. Didn't get it. So I was working in a building that had a jewelry manufacturer at the bottom floor. Okay. Okay. Breathing in those fumes every day yeah, with sure. a lack of ability to clear them. And you so they were, know. I had no clue. Mm-hmm. Right? Coming through the vents, I didn't even notice, didn't smell it. Mm-hmm. Just load, unload, unload. So do that for five, six, seven years. That's why eventually, you know, when you reach 50, the expectation is, this is like taken for granted that you're supposed to have a chronic disease. Yeah. yeah. Right? That's yeah. the North American standard. Yeah. Yeah. By 60, you're supposed to have two. Wow. That's the average. Really? Really? Last 15 years of your life are supposed to be spent in treatment. This is the expectation. It makes sense, to be honest, now that yeah. I think of it, yeah. Yeah, because what is, what is our belief about healthcare? I'll do whatever I want, yeah. and when something happens, the doctor will fix me. Yeah, fair. Yeah, it's true. Right? It's true. So that's what got me down this path of learning, 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 which then led me to everybody else needs to know this too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? So the gene you were missing, what was that gene supposed to do for the, for the person? So when you sleep at night, your body does something called glutathionization, which means glutathione is deployed, binds onto toxins, and then you send them to the liver to get rid of them. Your liver is your detox system, yeah. right? Yeah. And then you pee them up. Okay. So if you don't have the instruction, that's, by the way, that's what your DNA is. It's a set of instructions. Yep. Tells your cells what to do. So mm-hmm. it's literally your human instruction manual. We all have different versions. Yeah. My version is missing a page. Yeah. Right? Wow. So glutathione is floating around not knowing what to do. It's not binding onto the toxins. Yeah. So they're just free flowing. I have a friend who at 38 years old, this is going back a couple years ago, had a crazy cholesterol issue. Mm-hmm. Right? And this is when we first started the research in the company. And doing everything right, exercising, eating properly. The guy's a pharmacist, understands his health well. We didn't, he didn't understand why would I have a cholesterol, and why was it getting worse? Why was the dosage going up on, the, on his pill? Mm-hmm. It goes back to this exact same thing. He was golfing four days a week, which sounds okay. Yeah. But when you're golfing four days a week, you're breathing in all these pesticides and chemicals for four or five hours at a time that you don't even realize with, and he was also missing that gene, which by the way, this is not a one or 2% problem. This is like 20%. I was was just about to ask, is it a common thing? Yeah, Yeah. very common. Yeah, yeah. Especially the more sort of equatorial you get, the more Asian you get, the more where I came from clean organic lifestyle, right? Mm -hmm. Like my, one of our partners is Irish and Scottish. He has an extra copy (laughs) of the DT because the ancestors have been drinking (laughs) for 20 generations, right? (laughs) So they didn't need it or they needed an extra copy. So anyway, so it, it depends on what your ancestors course, did. So going back to this guy, 
my expression of this of that you know toxic toxic load was nausea, brain fog, had to sleep, couldn't go to the gym, that kind of stuff. His expression was his cholesterol went up. Same problem, why two different symptoms? There's another gene that determines, so most cardiovascular disease doesn't happen in the heart, it's the arteries around the heart. They get blocked, clogged, calcified, and then you get a heart attack, yeah. right? The inner lining of that vessel, the artery, is called the endothelial. Okay. It's that cell where the blood, the blood actually touches, yeah. right? He had the worst version. Genetically predetermined. You can test a five-year-old kid and figure this out, wow. right? So you had like a paper-thin version. So all that stuff that was free-flowing as well, those chemicals, toxins, yeah. not only from the golf course, but also from paint, chemicals, wherever he worked in the pharmacy, you know, compounding stuff, yeah, chemicals, yeah, right? Yeah. Causing damage, scratches, abrasions, so that weak lining leads to inflammation, yeah. right? There, your body's response to damage is inflammation. Your body's response to inflammation here in the endothelium is to actually send cholesterol as a hormone to reduce the inflammation. Uh, okay. Right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. You do that for one year, it's okay. Do it for seven, eight, ten years yeah. where when cholesterol meets toxicity, it actually hardens and gets deposited. It doesn't go back, it just sits there. Right? Okay. Builds up, builds this like yeah. Lego, just the pieces are getting higher and higher. And yeah. then eventually the doctor says, you got a cholesterol problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> what did he actually have? He had a missing gene to yeah. detoxify that crap that he was breathing in. Yeah that led to inflammation, that led to his body trying to keep him alive with the cholesterol, yeah. which he's now reducing with the pill, and he's gonna get inflamed somewhere else. He's gonna pop up as a cancer so or something So they were else. trying to treat the Simple. cholesterol, with, but it was the missing gene that was the issue. The number one prescribed drug in North America is cholesterol. Cholesterol pills, pills. yeah, I read right? that before, yeah, yeah. Why? Yeah. Because how many people have this combo? Wow. Many, 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 so, many people. So who do <laughs> right? we blame though? Do we blame the doctors for not doing enough research or do we blame the people teaching the doctors for not teaching them this? So here's the thing, this knowledge wasn't available, right? I was gonna say okay. it's new, right? Even in terms of genetics, if okay. you go ask the top geneticists in the world, they don't know this, right? <laughs> Why? <laughs> because they only study genes. What they believe is that, okay, there's something called sickle cell syndrome. It means when you're born, your blood cells are a weird shape, Okay. right? Causes problems. You have it? Yeah. You're kidding. Yeah. Okay. I, just, I just found out a couple of days ago. Wow. So he's got it, right? Sickle cell? Sickle cell. So okay. your, your cells are a different shape, causes some issues, yeah. right? There's no cure, there's no, like you gotta get treated for it, yeah. right? That is a genetic condition, meaning that you had this version of this gene which equals that problem. That's crazy. And doctors and scientists believe that's how genes work. Yeah. Meaning, I'm not born with diabetes, I'm not born with a cholesterol problem, I'm not born with bad PMS, for example. Yeah. These are things that happen later in life. Wow. But the choices that I made, for example, him golfing and not detoxing, etc., cetera, et cetera, led to that disease. Yeah. He needs to know what choices to make. Of course. That's that big gap in how you take this genetic information, what do these genes do, yeah. mm -hmm. and translate it into the big problem, like 90% of the health, literally 90% yeah. of the healthcare budget, chronic disease. Right? Interesting. Yeah. That's the lifestyle choices, I guess, too. Yeah, it's three things. Lifestyle, environment, nutrition. Yeah. What do I do? How do I exercise? How do I sleep? What do I expose myself to environment? And then what do I, what do I ingest? What do I yeah, eat? Yeah, okay, right? so how do you guys now, how do you test for this? I have two questions. How do, yeah. you, how do you test for this? But maybe the first question is, is how the fuck did you even get into that? <laughs> how did you even figure this out? Like, you know what I mean? You're so the, yeah, that's the key is, so, Okay, I came from outside of the industry, yeah. yeah. right? So for me, the big gap was, why aren't we using this stuff for the big problem? I'm a businessman, right? Yeah, I don't want to solve, sorry, Dean, sickle cell, <laughs> because it's not that many people, okay, right? Yeah. I want to solve diabetes, yeah. yeah, right? There's 80 million pre-diabetics in the yeah. US yeah. that are just about to get diabetes, yeah. that's what I want to fix. Mm -hmm. So when we looked at that, we said, well, we got to go meet diabetic people yeah. and figure out what's going on, right? There yeah. must be something driving this because not everybody is diabetic, yeah. right? Yeah. So we looked at it and what we saw was we can identify the suboptimal genetic profile. Like my friend who had the bad you know, arteries and the bad detox. Now we need to know what choices, and this is what medicine doesn't do. If I tell you based on this profile, you got an 80% chance of cholesterol issues, right? Yeah. Because I've studied that eight out of 10 people with this profile, nobody's looking at the 20% that didn't get it. Yeah. And what did they do? Mm -hmm. Because the whole system was around, when you get sick, I'll fix it. Yeah. Yeah. Not, how do you not get sick? It's true. Right? Yeah. So what we did, which no other company's done, we've studied 6,000 people in the last three years, one by one by one by one by one. 
and we looked at for the people that had the same profile, eight got sick, two didn't. What did they do? Yeah, what were the, the, what were the environment, nutrition, lifestyle? Because your genetics is kind of your capacity. Here's your wiring, right? Yeah. It's kind of like here, I got a Ferrari. Great, if I take it off-roading, yeah. it's gonna fall apart, yeah. 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 right? True. Yeah. But if I take it on the track, I'll beat the Jeep, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. what are you wired to do? And then what load are you actually putting on? And that's where we learn what choices do you make? Do I make an individual? Like, how do I actually gain weight? How do I actually put on muscle? How do I actually lose weight? That led us to something truly awesome, which we believe is gonna change medicine. Because we've actually met each person, we now understand what's called the phenotype better than the genotype. The, your list of genes, here's your DNA result, that's your genotype of this version. Your phenotype, what does that mean? My nose is this big, my hair is this long, like that's your phenotype. Okay. So now I can look at you and you and you and tell you stuff about your genes without ever testing you. Because wow. I know what your jawline means, yeah. I know what the size of your arm means. Yeah. Well, like uh, a smaller now, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. Bigger, but yeah, yeah, you wish, you wish. <laughs> so that phenotyping is what allows us to become a medical tool. Like when you go to the doctor, let me ask you five questions. It's like asking the wrong questions, yeah. right? Interesting. So you can tell yeah. just from the physical of someone, right? Yeah, we can tell by the way you behave, by the way you think, by the, yeah. all that stuff. So when you, how did you find out you were missing that gene? Did you use your own ways or did you actually go through a process? So we built our own test, yeah. right? So first of all, we found a gentleman named Dr. Mansour Mohammed, okay. who brilliant guy. He's one of four people in the world that can actually read the entire human genome. It's like, wow. you know, 22,000 genes times millions of yes. letters. You know, Jesus. so he can read the whole thing. He can read it. The whole, the whole thing. Yeah, it's a, a completely different language. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so we went to him and we said, "Here's what we want to do. Let's forget about genetics." Enough people are doing that. They're gonna one day Dean will be okay, right? <laughs> Dean soon, I promise. Yeah. It's coming, it's coming, bro. <laughs> it's let's let's how do we cross this over into what we call functional genomics? So like the way the body actually works. We already know how the cardiovascular system works there. Why are we not aligning those two things? Yeah. Right? So in that, you know, we, we took his science, we studied all those people, and we said now let's start to build sort of the product services and test them with different clinics, which we did kind of North America wide. It started with who's willing to pay, you know, celebrities, athletes, and we did a lot of professional athletes and a lot of celebrities and all that stuff. Then it got down to how do we build the artificial intelligence so this is available to everybody. Because we now know the insights, mm -hmm. right? I can look at you and say this about you. Uh, how do we make this like a tool where you said, like, what, what was it? It's a test. You literally spit in a tube yeah. that goes to a lab. Okay. We analyze your DNA, which we built sort of a very specific thing that we look for. Okay. Uh, most genetic companies are like, how do I test for more, 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 yeah. right? The pitch is, hey, I test for 5,000 genes. Well, I test for 100,000, right? Yeah. We only test for 100, but they actually mean something. They're actually yeah. It's not, you're not right. just bullshit. You're so looking for like specific. In general, what are those 100 like really telling you? So six big things. Okay. These are the big buckets that we think everybody kind of needs to know. Cardiovascular, it's 50%, like the kill ratio, if you yeah. want to call it, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Like 50% yeah. of North Americans are expected to have a cardiovascular issue. Crazy. Uh, mood and behavior, which is probably the biggest one for us. So if I have your DNA, I don't need to ever talk to you to tell you how you deal with stress, emotion, what your personality is like, uh, trauma, PTSD, are you irritable, are people like bothered to be around, like everything about the way you behave is all predetermined with your genetic wire, right? Uh, then detox and immunity, that whole thing we talked about, about sort of anti-inflammatory response. Inflammation is the root cause of disease. So how you deal with inflammation kind of predicts how well you deal with all disease, yeah. right? Then we deal with diet and nutrition. You know, there's, there's one thing to say, here's what you're supposed to eat, which we do look at, you know, carbs, fats, proteins, what time of the day should you eat? Wow. Uh, your circadian rhythm, like your internal clock, they were different, right? Mm -hmm. But also, how do you perceive food, right? Again, because we know the brain, we understand, are you an addict, are you a binger? Do you kind of graze every time you walk by the cupboard? Yeah. Do you lean on food because of stress and you don't even know it? Those types of things, and Come then we, yeah, it's that's awesome. crazy. Man. Yeah, wow. Then we get into fitness and hormones. So you know, I go to the gym, but I can't put on muscle. I go to the gym, but I can't lose fat. I have a problem. You we know problem. exactly why. So yes. getting the trial and error, I'll try this thing for two years before something finally works. No, here's how your body actually works hormonally. Yeah. So here's exactly what you need to do. And you have to translate that to like a workout or yeah. a, a, a yeah, meal yeah. plan or whatever. Exactly. That's yeah. that's and the last one is sleep. Huge. So huge problem. It's a I think uh, in the U.S. they're saying it's between, a, they're estimating 30 to 50 percent of the population has chronic sleep issues, wow. right? Okay. So it's at least 30 percent. Because of COVID, it's really been exposed now, yeah. right? Uh, so anyways, that's a big one where 
I can't sleep at night or I wake up in the middle of the night or I sleep through the night but I wake up feeling like crap. Yeah. Those are all genetic processes. Wow. Right? So oh, to actually shit. get you the deep high quality sleep, yeah. it's not take a pill and knock me out because you still didn't get good quality sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So those are the six big ones which if you go through it, you're kind of like version two of yourself. Yeah. Optimized version. There's so much more. You name a problem whether it's you know fertility issues or prostate cancer yeah. we deal with it all but these are the things that we think everybody kind of needs to go through yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah. when i'm when i'm laying in bed like holy fuck i can't sleep i'm fucked up you guys yeah. can tell me why yeah that's amazing yeah and, then, and again there's many reasons take me for example yeah so going back to brain neurochemicals what makes me entrepreneurial it's the same reason i can't sleep mm -hmm. right so dopamine is a chemical in your brain that makes you feel reward pleasure two things yeah. In order to get that, you have to bind it. So we're doing this thing. I feel kind of like I'm achieving something yeah. right now, right? So I'm, there's some dopamine, yeah. but I have to bind and connect it to actually feel that. Okay. So there's one gene called DRD2, which determines how dense your receptors are. I have the most least density, so it's like sparse, right? Okay. Slim to none. Okay. So I don't feel that much when it comes to reward and pleasure. Then there's a gene called MAO, which kind of breaks the dopamine up to help you go back to normal. You yeah. gotta come back to your normal state. I have the fastest MAO. So as I'm feeling it way down here, it's already kind of being chewed up and broken down. Okay. Then there's an enzyme called COMP that clears it out and gets rid of it. I also have the fastest COMP. Oh my gosh. So I feel it way down here. Yeah. Before I even begin feeling it, it's already been broken down and there's an enzyme getting rid of getting it. Getting rid of it all at the same time. So you have to work harder to, yeah, to reward, feel that. Yeah, reward to, and pleasure. So yeah. I have three options. Depression, because yeah. I've just never, and this is a huge reason yeah. why people get depressed. Uh, addiction, because I go down the pleasure route and I feed it with something, whatever that is, right? Mm -hmm. Or achievement, because I go down the reward route, because it does both things. And that's what I, I, yeah, I didn't intentionally do it that way, because I didn't know this at the time, but I kept bigger and bigger wins. Like whatever risk I did yesterday isn't good enough anymore, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So with that, you have peaks and valleys, losses too, but that's the same reason why I can't sleep at night. Because for me, I need that sense of reward, right? Mm -hmm. I don't feel satisfied, I don't yeah. feel happy. Unless, so if I'm on Instagram at night, you know, I, I have to do it as a routine. That yeah. if I haven't done it, I can't sleep. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm addicted. Of course. Right? If I didn't eat the exact, you know, protein that I need to eat because of my workout, I just can't like, handle it. Yeah. I can't sleep. Yeah. yeah. So now knowing that about myself, I can structure things the right way where I can't sleep. Yeah. Right? And that's like an entrepreneurial de a gene you're saying? I, yeah, I would call, well, there's two ways, yeah, there's two paths. This, this yeah. is what we call a warrior genetics, meaning yeah. that you're just going to go out there and do it. Would you say it was D, DRD? DRD2. DRD2. Yeah, it determines how dense your dopamine receptors are, right? But if you could have the flip opposite, the maximum receptors, okay. you just constantly kind of feel satisfied and happy with things because it's so easy for you. It's would it, would free, it, it free-flowing? Free yeah. yeah. Would yeah. like a child have like high receptors? Like, because I'm saying... Yeah, it's, you're born this way. Yeah, I guess you're right? born this way. You're born this way. This is what personality is. Yeah. Right? So now the, the flip opposite, my business partner, one of them, he has the maximum and he has the slowest comp, right? So he's fucking the flip opposite. He's very happy all the time. Yeah, we go in a meeting. It's like, okay, here's the 10 things we gotta do. He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm on it. And he's like looking up trips to the Bahamas. And <laughs> it's my good Literally, trip. right? And he kind of feels like he did it because he's yeah. so satisfied with just anything. And he can make a coffee and be like, yeah, yeah. yes, let's do yeah. it. But his superpower, when he finally finds that thing that triggers that feeling of pleasure, yeah. he will binge on it and he'll yeah. dive deep and he'll come back with a stack of paper like, how the hell did you do that? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I can't do that. I need to do a little bit of everything and like multitasking or whatever, yeah. but he'll just dive on the thing that he actually wants to do yeah. and do it better than anyone and just blow everyone away. Wow. But that's the other amazing. eight things never get started. Well, that's what I was going to say. Is there a downfall when, let's say, something like that, your receptors are so strong in, in one aspect? Is there a downfall in. Well, the doubt, if you don't know what's going on, yeah. that's, a yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. that's a downfall. Yeah, that's a downfall. Depression, like for him, it would be anxiety, the opposite, right? So yeah. if you don't know, if you know, it, 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 you don't necessarily have to DNA test it or know. If you just start to understand the traits and yeah. not chalk it up to the people around you, like this is how you're wired, yeah. Yeah. right? And just, again, structure things, your teams, even even the way me and him work yeah. is very different than the way we used to work before we knew this. Yeah. Right? And we now actually have a real good vibe. Before, it was constant friction. Well, it's so beneficial because right? then you understand, in a business perspective, and your partner, you understand who he is as a person, how how and why he you know moves and, and does things the way he does. Exactly. Right? That's so interesting. I'm wondering now, like more from a business perspective, 
have you guys like made any connections with like any medical offices or doctors or has there been pushback that they're not really uh, wanting to take on? Because I feel like what you yeah. said is like, if you know your issues, yeah. you can prevent them. I know like big pharma, yeah, yeah, yeah. they want the issues, right? Yeah, yeah, they yeah, want yeah. them because they want to fix them. So, what? Huge, so this is why, so you got Jeff Bezos, Warren Buffett, and Diamond, that JP Morgan CEO, yes. they got together like a couple years ago and said the biggest problem for corporate America is healthcare costs. They're, they're, they're very different there. Companies pay for healthcare. Here yes. it's free, right? Yeah. So they said, we got to fix this. So what did they do? They went and hired all the best doctors and said, reduce costs. We got to make people healthy instead of waiting to fix them. What did all the doctors do? Go into their existing toolkit, <laughs> you know, and say, push this button instead of that yeah, button. It's yeah. the same thing, right? Yeah. That thing fails. You got those three guys that try to disrupt healthcare. If you if those three guys can't disrupt healthcare, yeah. Yeah. who's gonna do it, right? Yeah. And that's the problem where I don't really think you can disrupt something as institutionalized as, like it's, you have to be part of the Everyone has licenses and there's, you know, you can't, FDA, Health Canada, you yeah. can't get around that stuff yeah. and just be a tech company that says, hey, we do things differently. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You also can't operate outside of the system you know, and be like, well, we won't really cross over into healthcare, but we're going to do something different because doctors, like you said, won't do it. Yeah. And that's where you go when you're sick. So what we believe is we have to kind of intertwine ourselves and not really say that, hey, being on pills is bad, but with their system where things are prescribable, where things are teachable, just learn and teach new things, better things. Meaning mm -hmm. that if we now identify why people actually have cholesterol issues, why not give them a pill to give them a superpower where they just never have it? Yeah. yeah. Pfizer can still make a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. Right? But instead of treating a sick person, you're maintaining a healthy person. Yeah. Interesting. Right? So yeah. they can still do what they do, just in a different way. So we're working towards that. Uh, and we need, obviously, buy-in from clinicians, which is really what we're doing right now. We do a lot of events, a lot of... We go to all the conferences and speak, and every time they're kind of like floored, like, why didn't we know this? Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, that well that that was my thing, right? Because like obviously, probably it's more of a grassroots thing where it's like if you guys can start getting like everyday physicians yeah. to start to believe in what you're doing, that's kind of how you make some noise, right? Yeah. Do you have to trademark or like anything patent? Anything? We've filed a couple of patents. So one, the thing where I explain where we're able to use a phenotype, like the physical yeah. manifestation, that nobody does that. So we patented that and protected that because we believe that's probably going to be the biggest thing we do. The biggest yeah. Impact. yeah. Uh, and we also filed a patent around COVID actually, because we um, early, early on, so COVID landed here with like March-ish, yeah. right? So uh, at that time, obviously every, like everyone else, we were shut down. Yeah. Yeah. And we said, we're a biotech company that studies the body, let's figure this thing out. Yeah. So Should we went us. to work and we, we realized before people started talking about this, that there's gonna be people that have no symptoms, there's gonna be people that kind of get a flu and there's people in the ICU. And we figured out the genetics behind that and why. Uh, and we announced that to the world. And we started talking to Health Canada and different people, and they're like, yeah, okay, let's see, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we built an actual uh, test for that specifically and a report for that that I can tell you in advance how sick you're going to get. Come I on. Already, yeah. Is all of this available like right now? Or? Yeah, it's available. Yeah, yeah. going to check how yeah. much is it? Yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't work if you have sickle cell, though. Okay, yeah. perfect. <laughs> sorry, 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 again, sorry, 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 Wow, that's fucking unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's that's crazy. Good. So, and now speaking out, and this is the big problem. And this is why I don't, unfortunately, Canada is not the place to innovate. Because yeah. Canada, you have one single payer in each province. You got OHIP that you got to deal with. I, I sat in front of the finance minister and talked, and they said, wow, this is amazing, but it doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. Because then they go back to the pharma lobby that's sitting at this round table saying, hey, let's just you know, make the next bill. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. In the US, employers have to pay the bills. They're highly motivated. So the traction we're getting there with these guys saying, yes, help us save money, make sure our, our employees actually are healthy and enjoying and they want to work with us and yeah. all that type of stuff. So that's where, unfortunately, that's why we don't have a biotech industry in Canada. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess, yeah, and I guess that's probably your sales pitch. Like, it's like, we'll help you save money. Yeah. And also keep your employees healthier. They work better. Yeah. And they want to stay. Yeah. And they want to stay and, they, and they'll actually understand their own body better. And then that's going to generate... A more of a like a motivated worker, I guess, sure. right? Yeah, Interesting. Sure. That's crazy. Yeah, I can imagine the pushback, right? Because it's huge, of course, yeah. for well, sure. And and yeah. and I'm curious, like, like you said, you don't like you don't come from a medical background or a biotech background, so yeah. stepping into this space, and I'm not sure about your maybe your partners do or don't, but has there been pushback on the side of like, well, why the hell are we listening to these guys? Yeah, for sure. Just this morning, I was speaking to a guy about uh, they're doing a TV show about health. 
and they were talking to us about just you know consulting them on how to make things personalized. And at the end, the guys like, I love everything, but just tell me this: you're not a doctor. Why would I listen to you? Right? Yeah. I was like, well, has your doctor done any of this for you? Why do you go to your doctor first yeah. of all? Yeah. Because something hurts and you want him to fix it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Does he tell you why it hurts? So go ahead, keep going down that path, yeah. right? Meanwhile, if you want to truly innovate and get better and not get sick, that's not available at your doctor. They don't mm -hmm. sell that product. It's usually, right? They're usually outdated. Like we spoke and, about this before, like yeah. medicine was outdated. And even the doctors sometimes, they don't fully, they're not fully educated up to date with, well, with the ways that, with things that can help you. you yeah, they're, they're, it's like so they stop learning. You, get, you go to university, you learn, yeah. right? You could have done that last year, you could have done that 30 years ago. Yeah. And you have to get continuing education credits. Mm -hmm. You have to keep, and you go to where is either the easiest thing or the most entertaining. You can go to anything that's accredited, right? Yeah. It's not necessarily. I mean, how many courses are there saying here's how to make sure people never get sick? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That doesn't it really exist. No, no. no. Right? I, so yeah. So sorry. No, no, no. I agree. Yeah. And I feel like for 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 these doctors, everyday physicians or whatever, or even specialists, yeah, like they go and they they learn, and then they just start practicing, and then. When you're a doctor, you're putting in long hours, long dates. Like, how much time do you have to continue researching your field? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because you have to date. You, to date. Yeah. you need to make a living, and you probably have a fucking nice car, a nice yeah. house. You got to make sure you make your money. So you, now you've lost that whole like, how do we innovate? Yeah. You know, it's in like, my industry, yeah. or you know, I feel like if you had a headache today, or you had one 15 years ago, they're gonna tell you the same thing. Yeah. Well, and, and that's know? what I'm saying. So, yeah, maybe we do need people who aren't a born in the medical field to come out and innovate. Especially like you're saying, it's biotech. There's that tech side yeah. to it where like- Well, you have the business background too, so it's not like you don't know what you're doing, right? Yeah, when it comes to that. We go speak at medical conferences. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the initial thing is like, who's this guy? Why, why are we listening to this? Yeah. Yeah. At the end, there's a lineup of all these fangirling doctors <laughs> saying, talk, yeah. how yeah. do we do this, right? Yeah. We, we, there was a conference at McMaster that uh, it was all around chronic pain. They do it once a year and about 400 doctors show up from different parts wow. of Canada and they're all pain specialists. So they had us speak there uh, about a year ago. Yeah. And at the end of the thing, they have this thing where they ask the doctors feedback, like what did you think of the speaker, just so we can plan better, like what, what kind of content do you need? We were ranked the best performing speech they ever had. Come on. They've been doing this for decades, right? Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. they probably say the same thing over and over. Yeah, yeah. it's more of the same, right? Yeah. Yeah. So McMaster is actually, it's one of the most innovative medical universities in the world. Mm -hmm. When we talk about uh, clinical studies, and th that was actually invented at McMaster, like the way we actually do research and all that, it was, it was created there, right? Okay. The, the, sort of the guidelines for how we do stuff. And so a lot of research is still done there. Yeah. And there's a big component around chronic pain. None of them have ever heard what we had to say. Yeah. We don't have to mask the pain. You can, you know what, let me actually tell you a story about this lady who was actually very close to McMaster. She was in St. Catharines. She was dealing with a pain doctor because she got in a car accident and lost the feeling of her hand from the finger trip to the elbow. Right? She was older. She was, yeah. I think, in her late 60s. Okay. Completely numb. Yeah. Right? So she was dealing with other pain issues, but this they gave up on. It damaged. You were in a car accident. It was broken. Right? So she came to us for DNA testing, not for this, but because she went to some... Uh, kind of like a Botox beauty, beauty okay. clinic. Yeah. And she said, give me some supplements to make me feel younger. And they said, you know what, there's this company that if you take a DNA test, they'll actually tell you what supplements to take. That, wow. That's us, right? Okay. So she did it for that reason. Two weeks into that, she woke up in the middle of the night in pain in her fingertips. Okay. Right? About six weeks later, full mobility. This is a year and a half after her accident for which this thing was completely yeah. numb. Yeah, again, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. That's when her doctor called us and said, I don't know what's going on, but nothing changed other than this, the supplements, yeah. Yeah. right? What the hell's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> so we looked at it and we weren't trying to fix that. We weren't trying to solve it. We looked at it and we first looked at her profile, just like I did with my friend with yeah. cholesterol. I wasn't concerned about the problem. Like where are you, where's the gaps and holes? Yeah. Her gap was her, what's called methylation, your anti-inflammatory process. Okay. There's seven or eight genes in the system and she was kind of suboptimal all the way through, had the bad versions of all of them, right? Yeah. So what was actually happening? what was discounted as broken, right? Yeah. Because if you, the test is symptomatic. Pope, I can't feel, it's broken, right? Do you dive deeper than that? No. Yeah. What was actually going on is, when you get in a car accident, there's always an infl inflammatory response. Any damage, you get inflammation. Yeah. She suffered inflammation to the point where her nervous system was kind of like choking, right? Yeah. Neural inflammation, okay. where it just couldn't function anymore. 
And she had such a poor anti-inflammatory response and a poor detox response that she just wasn't recovered yet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was just taking her a lot, it was taking her a year and a half longer than somebody maybe would have taken two or three weeks, right? Those supplements, we were only targeting the system failure. We didn't ask her what was wrong. She has bad methylation, give her those three, four things. Six weeks later, full mobility. That's insane. Right? That is insane. So imagine going, like you said, speaking to a doctor, like, and they, they give up, right? They give up on it too, you said. Yeah. Right now, right? Health Canada is petitioning to make it that doctors are not allowed to uh, recommend supplements. What? But who's yes. supposed to recommend them then? You're not supposed to recommend. You just do your own research and figure it out. Naturopaths can recommend. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Doctor, their Health Canada is trying to make it where doctors are not allowed to recommend supplements anymore. And why? Because they're not evidence based. Fuck off, bro. Right? Fuck off. What story you just said was pretty evident. So that, yeah, yeah and, and this is the challenge. The challenge. That thing that I said that was designed by McMaster, yeah. right? That it's evidence based yeah. science, which yeah. means there's a very specific process you have to go through which can, they now is believed to be evidence. They don't believe what is called anecdotal, which means here's one story. And it happened, yeah. And, right, yeah. that doesn't, doesn't mean that's it's not again, yeah. But if that one story happened 5,000 times, isn't that good? Is that part of the process? Like it has to happen a certain amount of yeah, time? Yeah, it's, so it's, it's, they do what's called a double blind placebo, right? So there's some people on this side and there's some people on this side. Some people are given the actual product, some people are given a sugar pill. Right, cool. so it it they truly figure out did it work or not? Yeah, or was right? it something mental? Yeah. yeah, and by the way, there's a gene for that, the placebo gene. Really? Yeah, how susceptible <laughs> you are. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. There are people that actually shouldn't be in this trial because if you tell them they're taking sugar pill, they'll actually get better. Wow. Yeah, genetically, the placebo triggers the biochemistry response. Whatever you tell them is happening, they'll actually go do it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So this process, this you know, evidence-based process is what's accepted. And I understand from drugs that could potentially kill you, yeah, you should be very careful and careful. safe about what you're actually saying go to market. Of course. A supplement, which if you take too much, you kind of pee it out, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. And it's really just food, condensed yeah. food. Of course. You know, uh, and there's thousands of years of evidence of this stuff working, you know? Yeah. So, you know, anyways, that's what's going on so, today. So why, so why do you think they're trying to stop doctors from Re uh, recommending supplements like what do, you, what do you think the the healthcare industry in North America is four trillion dollars okay there you go right? <laughs> that answers the answer. question four trillion dollars <laughs> that's, that's the answer, answer. Right? Yeah. if I told you one thing to everybody just just take a lot of vitamin D yeah. five thousand if you just did that one thing yeah of the twenty two thousand genes in your body two thousand of them require vitamin D to function yeah. wow so when we say it's like your immunity vitamin it makes yeah. you get through the cold and flu season <laughs> right it's because everything is kind of off, off kilter, like whacked out when you just not don't have enough vitamin D. Mm -hmm. But when you go to the doctor and they test you and say, hey, in your blood there's enough vitamin D, that isn't often the case because most of us, especially in a city like Toronto, where we're not from here, where we're from sunnier climates, etc., mm -hmm. there's three steps to vitamin D. Get it in the blood, which you do from the sun or from food. Then there's transport it to the cell, different gene, different process, and nobody's measuring that. If you don't do that well, it doesn't matter how much is in your blood, it's just you're peeing it out before you ever use it. Then there's a third step of actually bind it and use it in the cell. Yeah. That could also be not being done so well, right? So anyways, even if you do that one thing and just take a whack load of vitamin D every day, everything's going to change. Your mood, your skin, your, like, you, you name all these common problems. Uh, and this is where, you know, going back to what you said, yeah, this stuff works, yeah. you know? There's plenty of evidence that it works. Yeah. I want to ask a question. How can, how can uh, DNA affect, like, your work ethic? So, going back to mood and behavior, yeah. right? You're, if you understand your neural wiring, uh, it's, it's not often about, it's not so much work ethic. Okay. It's your work style. Is there, like, a, like a hustler yes. gene? Like, you that's, know, like... that's me. That's the entrepreneur, right? Yeah, yeah. So I just need to seek reward. Yeah. And you tell me something, I want to work on it. And that's it. something you've obviously noticed in different people, too. When you yes. Work. Yeah. And now I can meet people and figure out how, even just the way they handle themselves, the way their eyes move, you can yeah. tell the reaction. We started to learn this stuff, right? Wow. So, yes, in terms of work ethic, first of all, work ethic is often about matching you to what you actually enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And not just the thing, but the, the way, the yeah. style, right? Yeah. So it's first of all, you have to enjoy what you're doing and you have to enjoy how you're doing it. Okay. Yes. That's work ethic. Yeah. If you're doing those two things, you can, it doesn't, it's not work anymore. Yeah. yeah. Right? When you're mismatched with those two things, that's where work ethic, ethic is also a problem. So we have, there's different ways people work. There's me seeking reward. 
there's the flip opposite of me, the binger, who's yeah. is seeking pleasure, ongoing, like, I need, I can watch eight episodes of Netflix, that's yeah. the binger, right? Yeah. <laughs> so me, I need to watch Netflix on time every day, I'm an addict, yeah. right? Yeah. So then there's people that, uh, there's a gene called BDNF, brain-derived neurotropic factor. It determines, it's actually most studied for protecting from concussion. That's what people look at it for. But it also highly affects your mood. And if you have the optimal version, like I have, you kind of only look at things very high level. Right, you don't want to like send me a one-line email. Don't send okay. me a page. Right? That's me, bro. That's yeah. so me. Oh yeah. God. But you're also probably balanced for mood. It's hard to get you to yell and scream or walk out of a meeting or slam a door. Right. Yeah. Yes, that's also me. Yeah. Right? That's exactly literally me. Yeah. So then there's people the flip opposite of which there was somebody in our company, where all of a sudden everything bothers them and pushes them, and, you, and then you start to think of work ethic. Like, why can't you just do it? Yeah. Well, he can. He just needs to do it a different way. He needs to do one thing really well. And he needs to think deep about it, right? He needs to send you a five-page email to talk to you about one thing, right? Wow. So, it, so it's when you look at work ethic, you 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 got to mismatch people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Yeah. 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 So it, it's again matching yourself to what you're actually designed to do. See, but I feel like you need to know about that even before you go to like high school. You understand? Because yeah. people are in high school right now, they're like, yo, why can't I focus on this? Or why can't I finish this on time? There's all these things exactly. that are asking, the, right? They the, just think it's their fault. They're just yeah. like, oh, it's Well, and the problem is, especially, I feel like, and now that you mentioned school, like, you know how many kids are just thrown to the, I don't want to say to the garbage, but the like, curb. you know what I mean? Curb, yeah, kicked to the curb and yeah. just being like, ah, oh, she's stupid, he's stupid, ah, oh, they don't get ridden off. But just, it's like, you're just not presenting them this certain task or homework or this info in the way that they Yeah, in the way that they'll do it. it. Yeah. School is designed for the middle, Yeah, right? The high performers, it's not enough, and the low performers, it's not enough. Yeah, There's not enough attention and personalization here, and they may not even be low performers, they just be mismatched with that one size fits all trial yeah. and error. Yeah. You, know, you know, there was a time where I did really well in school, and there was a time that I actually did really poorly, because I lost interest. Yeah. So I would have been categorized as a you know, low performer, but I also could have been on this polar opposite if I was just interested in the thing I was doing. Yeah. Yes. So that school, and by the way, my sort of vision for all of what we're doing, what we're doing now is healthcare. We're making sick people healthy and we're helping healthy people sort of stay healthy, of right? But all of what we're doing in this research is to build personalized parenting. Yeah. Right, because I understand cool. the earlier you start, of the better course. this is for you. Yeah. I was just about to say, would you guys ever consider trying to like imagine taking that to like an elementary school? We're already building it. And, oh, that's, yeah. amazing. But that's amazing. But I don't believe, again, school is just like healthcare, especially in Canada. It's different in the U.S. Um, it's so sort of, it's hard to penetrate yes. and make a change. Yes. Right. There's too many decision makers, too many chefs to change. Yeah. You know, to so change what we it. believe is we'll build our own system outside of school, and that's somewhere where it's easier to do than healthcare. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Of course, you can build your own system. You can go do your thing, and then all of a sudden you have this personalized experience. It's not just education; it's also performance, athletics. Imagine a kid that just wants to be on the track team, but he was actually designed to be a power lifter. Yeah. You know, imagine the girl that it doesn't matter what she does; she just can't get a six pack. Mm -hmm. And she's just starving herself, and it was just a hormone thing, yeah. right? And if she just ate these three or four foods, she would have got it, right? So imagine That's all insane. that stuff, body development stuff, concussion, right? Playing hockey and getting a concussion. There's some kids that just shouldn't be hit on the head because yeah. they can't handle it. Yeah. All that stuff is where we're the future of what we're doing. And when I say future, like a year from now, yeah. personalized parenting. Here's your manual. Right? That's, That's so cool. I, I was gonna say what what I like about what you guys are doing is there's so many avenues you can yeah. take it. But yeah. the best part about it, and I'm sure obviously you guys, this is probably a big reason why you do it, is because you're helping people. Well, yeah, that's, it's the impact. Right? Yeah. When it's you amazing. have an impact business, the money's it just it comes. Yeah, right? exactly. No, now that we're out there and talking, when we first started, and I was trying to seek investment dollars because it was expensive to research six thousand people, right? Of course. And it wasn't easy because like, oh, show us your revenue. The typical typical yeah. Canadian like risk adverse story. Yes. And I said, I don't think you guys get what we're doing. It's yeah. a four trillion dollar industry that we can flip on its head and mm -hmm. you're asking me how many DNA tests we sold last month. Yeah. <laughs> right? So anyway, so we just decided to, you know, friends and family to slowly chip away cell phone yeah. and we did it that way. Uh, now as we're out there talking, I can't tell you how many investors are knocking on the door of course, sure, saying, of Let's course. do this and let's do it, we'll take you to China, we'll do it. Yeah. You know, so uh, yeah, so everyone understands the the impact, and that's why I'm saying, if you focused on the impact and what the outcome and what you can actually deliver, the business and the money just comes. Yeah, 
Yeah. Right. That's it, so cool. Another another thing is like a huge question that we're asked at a young age too is like, what are you passionate about? What do you like doing? What do you actually like doing? You're gonna enjoy yeah. doing that. A lot of people don't even know what they, they like doing or what their yeah. passion is, right? So yeah. by doing something like this, would you be able to say, you know what? I can see you in more of a creative space. I can see you in more of an athletic space. I can see you in more of a educational space. You know, like, is that something you could talk about? 100%. Somebody? I'm already doing that with my kids. That's crazy. Man. Yeah, so I'm already, my oldest is now 12. You know, he's really smart. Yeah. Uh, but it does. It only expresses, again, the things that he actually likes to do. Yeah, right? of course. Yeah. So his socks are always around. There's always dirty dishes and all that. Like, he, doesn't, he doesn't like it, he doesn't care. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I was frustrated with that until I understood this genetically, yeah. right? Now it doesn't bother me as much because I don't see it as like a failure. I see it more as like, that's... His wiring. Just look at what, yeah, his wiring and the, the good stuff he's done. I, I got to focus on that, of course, right? Yeah. Channel him down what he's actually designed to do. Yeah, and forget yeah. about this stuff. He's not supposed to do that stuff, yeah, right? So, cool. so now, uh, when it comes to, yes, even, even the arts, even yeah. that kind of stuff, we kind of figured out, just fluke that... He actually should be really good at drawing and painting, and, and he was. Yeah, that's crazy. Right? That's insane. He started, and this is—he's twelve. He started a year ago at eleven, right? Yeah. And now it's as if he's been doing it his whole life. Yeah, wow. Drawing these beautiful images—it yeah, yeah. just made sense genetically that he would be able to dive deeper in being a creative. I can't. Yeah. You're, tapping, exactly. you're tapping into something that who knows if he ever would have even tapped into it. Yeah, he would have never just discovered, that's, that's right? Crazy. Imagine yeah. you had the skill. It's like Matrix. You got this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't even know you had it, right? Yeah. Yeah. It literally would just trial and airing this stuff. For, also, I'm learning from it and yeah. validating what I think is true and it's ending all being true. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for sure. Like, Should they be focused on art? Should they be athletic? Should they be academic? Should they be an accountant? Should they be a doctor? Are they going to have the ability to see blood yeah. and not pass out? Yeah. And, so and more, you know, Are they going to have serotonin dysregulation where everything is bothersome them and they're irritated all the time yeah. and they can't handle working with people? They need wow. to be solo, right? So that's so. That's cool. even something you can implement, I guess, when you're applying for a, a position too, right? People for sure. Like, let's say you're coming and you want to be a surgeon now, and you do this, and you're yep. like, "Yo, this person doesn't want to see any blood." Yep. So this guy's not the guy. But but I, but I like I like the I like the thing about you, where you said where you like now you don't get upset at like the things that you, that's because huge, that's huge. which is massive for yeah. a parent, I imagine, because like then that just allows you to understand your kid on a different level, exactly, other than yeah. just being like, "Oh, I know my my yeah. my daughter, she's athletic," but it's like, no, she's not. She's yep. probably better off in this. That's so cool. We actually that's had so that cool. exact scenario where there's a parent that came to us that said that when I have an issue, you know, kid took something out of the cookie jar, whatever, I yell and I scream. One of the kids, for the next three days, if I even walk in the room without a smile, they're like, what did I do? Wow. Right? The other one, within a few minutes, he's back to doing the thing that I just yelled at him about. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Right? Yeah, yeah. What's going on here? So yeah. they had actually, this came out of a question from an actual patient. She was a female hormone patient. She had, a, I think, a, for, I think it was a fertility issue, yeah. some kind of female hormone issue. Then she started asking these questions about her kids. So we actually did the genetics and we looked at it. And the kid who would have, call it that trauma response, was deleted for this gene. It's called adr 2 b and it determines how well you deal with adrenaline. Okay. Right? So for some people, when you have that negative stimuli, yeah. car accident, mom yelling yeah. at you, they imprint it. Yeah. Right? It's like a memory now. It's a memory. You actually filter through that thinking. So the next time mom comes in with a frown, you're thinking, you're thinking of that thing, the frown you just saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're yeah. actually starting up exactly where you left off. As if that thing just happened, right? So now you think about PTSD, trauma, for, why is it such a big deal for some and not for others? Yeah. That's that kid, right? The other kid had the flip opposite because you get your genes from your mom and your dad, yeah. mm -hmm. right? So they had different versions. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess one of them, mom or dad, is more you know, prone to trauma, the other one isn't. Yeah. The other kid just didn't care. Yeah. Wow. Different genetics. I already, I already trust you more than my doctor now. <laughs> I'm already done. My eh? mom's gonna wish she, she tested me when I was five years old. <laughs> I'm done. I'm never, I'm never going to the doctor uh, anymore. What's, what's like the most, I guess, unique or or different case you've seen from testing people? Like, was there was there a case where it's like, yo, I've never seen this kind of gene before, or this much impact from this kind of gene? Well, you know, there's things where it's not. So we always test for the same stuff. Yeah. Right. It's more like what insight do we get that was yeah. new or okay. unique? Mm -hmm. um, we have, I mean, I can think of stuff like where we have an Olympic athlete, this lady who, uh, we work with Red Bull Performance. Amazing. Cool. So Red Bull uh, sponsors, I think, 1,500 athletes. And so they built this high performance center 
to make them better and yeah. want them to win, right? Yeah, of course. And yeah. that thing is so good that now actually professional athletes pay them money to go use that thing. Of all this biohacking equipment yeah. and all this stuff, right? So they use our DNA test in that to make their athletes better. Yeah. So there's one woman in particular who is a triathlete. Uh, I think U.S. Yeah, she's a U.S. Olympic triathlete. Uh, and her issue was that she kept having weird spasms of injury with no recovery. Okay. And then other months, no issue. Wow. Right? Interesting. Didn't make sense. Yeah. Like, why all of a sudden, like, you, you, she's like two different body types. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So oh. we were forced to look at something that wasn't, and again, we go, just like you said, this same central pool of data just keeps pointing to so many different things. We just yeah. need to ask the right question. Yeah. yeah. Right? And that's kind of like the AI just keeps learning. Yeah. So for her, we looked at, okay, let's, let's like kind of track back what happened to you. And we kind of saw this regular scheduled failure. So we said, okay, woman, regularly scheduled, it must be synced to her mental cycle. Okay. Right? So what's going on there? And then we started to dive deeper in the dates, and it was. And we, what we figured out is there's certain days in the menstrual cycle where women can't do heavy training because they can't recover. Interesting. Right? Oh, Why? Testosterone's at a different level, yeah. estrogen's at a different level, but estrogen toxicity is also so. When you have your menstrual cycle, men and men also have one, by the way. We just do it daily. Women do it monthly. Oh, really? Yeah, every day you just pee it out, right? Damn. So the peak is, so you, at midnight you start making your hormones, the peak is kind of like 6 to 8 a.m. That's why you have the morning wood phenomenon. <laughs> <laughs> Testosterone is high. That. Or something That's the explanation right? for morning wood. Yeah. Is that it's it? It's the genetic amazing. reason for morning wood. I love that. Yeah. So now uh, women have a monthly cycle where you make progesterone, you turn it into testosterone, you turn it into estrogen. But before you clear the estrogen, you, you turn it into a byproduct. There's two, four, or 16 hydroxyestrogen, what it's called. Two is really clean and pure. Four and 16 are toxic, mm -hmm. right? So whatever your ancestors were doing, they were probably eating the right foods, doing the right stuff, where it didn't matter that they had the toxic version. Yeah. Now that you're in wherever, Toronto, LA, wherever she was training, you know, it now matters because you're eating the wrong way, you're sleeping the wrong yeah. way, you're also taking a birth control pill and loading more estrogen so you get more of that toxic byproduct, yeah. yes. right? So for her, this is exactly what was happening. She was on birth control pill, she had toxic estrogen that she was producing, when you train hard, your body gets inflamed, right? Her anti-inflammatory response wasn't the best, just like the lady that had the numb arm, right? Methylation yeah. wasn't that good. So there were certain times of the month where the estrogen toxicity was at its peak and she was under like high inflammation, she would get injured. Yes, and it'd be harder for her to And it'd be recover. harder for her to recover. Mm -hmm. Interesting, right? that makes sense. And it would, so we basically trained her, uh, sorry, taught her what her monthly training schedule was. And this is in the report now. We yeah. never intended to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were just asked the right question, yeah. right? And so now this, uh, so we've done this with a number of Olympic athletes, particularly women now, and they just keep getting better and better and better, and they personalize their training. Wow. Right? So yeah. I'm, I'm curious, I'm curious, more back to the business side now of it. What does your internal team look like? Like, so, okay, so, you send me the tube, I spit in it, send it back to you guys. What's the process from there? I'm curious for anyone who's yeah. actually interested in doing it. What is the process? So it, like? it, there's a process that's happening right now, and there's a process that will be happening a few weeks from now. Okay. Because as a biotech, we've just literally in June crossed over from being like a peer research company into sell, 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 right? We now yeah. make products and people can access them. Before that, unless you were a clinic or some kind of researcher, we didn't have a way to work with you, yeah. right? So right now, we still work with our research lab, which means you send us, or we send you, a collection kit, you spit in a tube, you ship it back, it takes four or five weeks to like process and then you get these six reports that I was telling you about. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. When you get those six reports, we we give you a, one call with the health coach to kind of help, it's a lot, it's like 300 pages, yeah. right? So they kind of help you navigate and here's how you read the stuff, here's, here's how to make it quick. Uh, then if you'd like, you can book additional coaching time. Okay. I want to dive deep on weight loss. Yeah. Right, tell, let's use my genetics to make that happen, yeah. right? I want to understand my diet, and then you can book coaching time for that kind of, type of thing. There's also supplements and other solutions that we've curated. Now that we know your genetics and your genetics, here's what you actually need. Things that you know you need it, I can't sleep at night, give me something, and things that you didn't even know were coming, like you're at risk for prostate cancer, you need to start taking this stuff, right? Come on. Yeah. So now we start curating that stuff and matching it to your genetics, and that marketplace that we built kind of offers those things. So the difference between today and what's coming is 
the DNA test is ready today, as I said, the coaching call is ready today. That marketplace of curated solutions is launching in October. Cool. And the testing time will come down from five or six weeks to two weeks to 10 days. Beautiful. Right? So that's the difference. That's so it's a little bit of vertical integration by October. You'll be like, okay, this is your body type, blah, 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 blah. This is what you need. Yes. Or your and you have it ready for you. Yeah, and yeah. here it is. If you but want even the supplements, stuff, it's not in-house, is it? Like you guys, no, 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 we, we that's actually, by October, wow. you're saying. Yes. So we already do that. We've been doing that for two years where we literally custom make supplements wow. for people, right? Wow. Uh, we had a project where we worked with um, this Hollywood fitness trainer. You know that movie Shazam? Uh, yes. The guy yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We had the whole uh, crew, or I should say the actors, on our product so that they were optimized. Wow. That's during insane. The, yeah. That's insane. Because 15, 20 hour days, like yeah. how do you actually recover? So we yeah. had a custom genetic based protocol for all the actors that they were actually ready to go. That's super cool, man. That's right? Cool. So the, and their trainer who we work with, this LA guy, he's the guy that ordered it all for them, right? So anyway, so that going from like, how do we work from a celebrity that will pay whatever you want yeah. to like, how do we make this available to everybody? An everyday person. Yeah, yeah, that thing is going live in October because now we've learned so much from doing this custom work that we've been able to take it down to, here's your hormone support bottle, or here's your cardiovascular, because we've done this for like, 5,000 people, so we know what needs to go in there. Now, yes. Right? So that's what's coming. That's the, the how have you guys been, been marketing so far? Like, how have you guys been reaching out to these It's been research, right? So it's yeah. been, we, we work with, we put out to the clinical world, if you have a problem that you can't solve, give it to us. Nice. Yeah, we'll try. Yeah, we'll we'll try fix it. Yeah. Right? We first of all do two things. There was some business there, which yeah. wasn't really the main intention, but the bigger one is we're learning. Yeah. Right? It was forced, like, they asked us a question about the recovery, we fixed it. Yeah. Right? So that's what we did, and it was you know personal trainers, uh, Hollywood guys, uh, a lot of these executive clinics where you know Royal Bank will pay a clinic ten thousand dollars a year per them, person yeah. to just keep them healthy. Yeah. yeah. So we went to a lot of those types of places, and that's what we did. And now it's taking all of that, putting it into our AI, so that instead of paying ten thousand dollars, you're paying I think it's four hundred dollars for the the test, which gives you yeah. the same insights wow. that the guy was paying ten thousand. We had a guy in Silicon Valley that was doing our sort of five to $10,000 program and selling it for $100,000 to the Silicon Valley CEOs. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, they're paying $100,000 a pop to go through the program. That's so, that's so different, that's why. Yeah. And they got the money. Yeah. yeah. And they got the money too. I, and I'm curious, more from an entrepreneurial aspect, like you guys are tackling a fucking massive, you know, problem, issue, uh, an industry. Mm -hmm. At what point, and like what's going through your head when you're like, all right, fuck it. Like we're gonna we're gonna go in and we're gonna tackle this thing. Like what's going on in the back of your mind when you're like, all right, we're about to tackle a four trillion dollar yeah. industry. Like and and then and then you know getting started in it because like you know you're not you didn't just start a business where you sell t-shirts. Yeah. You know, and no offense to anybody who sells t-shirts, it could keep be a great thing. Keep selling yeah. the t-shirts, but like what you're tackling is it, it's insane. Yeah. It's insane. So what's the mindset going into that and being like, okay, so we're gonna do this. when we first started, we didn't even think we'd ever get there. It was like. Let's learn, make something, executives will buy it. We have yeah. a very small niche market, right? Athletes, and the things that we were doing, we just would do more of that or charge more money, whatever, yeah. right? Yeah. Then when we started to get into AI and realized we could actually do more for more people, what I realized is you have to, even within the medical community, there's half a million doctors in the US, there's 30,000 functional doctors. Meaning these are people that are so disappointed in their own practice. Yeah and so sick of doing the same thing every day that they want to got more education on how the body actually works, meaning beyond uh, how do you prescribe, but how do you maintain health, so yeah. root cause medicine, and they do it. There's 30,000 of them in the U.S. Nice. These are all the guys you see on TV that write all the books about how do you eat and how do you sleep. Yeah. And they're all these functional docs. So we believe if we start there and make an impact with the people that are already looking for something, and we go to the employers. Because employers are highly motivated. They already know everything sucks. Yeah. yeah. Right? yeah of course. They've been through all the products. They're paying too much money. It's choking them. So if we can help reduce costs and make people better, then all of a sudden the insurance companies have to start covering our products. Because the employers, Amazon says, hey, I have 80,000 employees. You have to pay for this thing. Or yeah. lose, lose my account, right? Yeah. Then all of a sudden FDA has to start clearing these things because the insurance lobby says, I need this product on the job. Yeah. Right? Then all of a sudden the doctors start to say, oh, this thing is prescribable. I can go use it, and it, it, so it's it's not a one step answer. Right? Mm -hmm. You got it's and it's a big industry to tackle, but it'll, it it will happen a lot quicker than people think, because it's happening from many angles, not just us. Yeah. There's a lot of tech companies, a lot of innovators that are going out there. There's a company called Levongo that built a diabetes app, yeah. right? and 
the Center for Disease Control came out a few years ago and finally admitted that diabetes can be reversed and prevented. Right? It, it, meaning that you, yeah, you can figure out that it's a diet-based thing. Yeah. And so they actually built a protocol that if a doctor learns this prevention protocol, we'll pay you, just like we pay anyone else yeah. for anything else, right? So Levongo came out and built an app. They took the exact same 1950s protocol for diabetes, they just put an app around it. Yeah. That thing grew from zero to 400,000. Just because the experience of going to a doctor is so old, yeah. yes. that people prefer the app, they went from zero to, I think, an $11 billion IPO in a few years, and they just got sold last year for $18 billion. To Teladoc, who is one of the big telemedicine platforms, yeah. an allopathic, straightforward medical company, Teladoc, is saying we need to buy this because this is the future of medicine. Mm -hmm. So the, the, that sort of momentum is already there. Yeah, yeah. fair. Yeah. You were saying they didn't even like reinvent the wheel; they just took it and put it on an app. Yeah, they they put behavioral change around okay. it and some new. They, but they didn't change how you deal with diabetes, other than eat like this, exercise like this. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. There was no beautiful uh, some magic drug they came up with or anything. Yeah. It's the same old stuff. Right? So so I guess in the now for you guys, you started off with one thing, but it has continued to grow. Yeah. Has grown. You're so learning you're, more. Too you're learning you more as you go, and I guess now he kicked that back to like you, the person you are, you keep looking for these bigger wins, right? Yeah, so like, yeah, okay, yeah. cool, we, we tackled this. How do we get to the next exactly. thing? How do we get to the next thing? How do we get yeah, to the next thing? Yeah, just keep going, man. Yeah. Forget about that I can't sleep at night. No, <laughs> yeah. okay, whatever. I'm gonna stay up anyways. Yeah. <laughs> There's too much work to um, do. So is what, what you guys consider, like, what you guys do is considered biohacking. So to some degree, yeah, because- Can, you, can you explain what biohacking is just to our audience? Yeah, so, uh, so Dave Asprey is the founder of biohacking. He's actually a partner in our company. Okay. He's an investor also. So I actually found out he was going to be at a conference somewhere, I think it was in Phoenix. I flew down there because I knew we needed him. And this is, goes back to what we just said about medical. It's those opinion leaders. You need the key people that have the voice. Yeah. Once they validate it, then you know, it starts to spread from there. So I literally stood at a conference with this test tube in my hand asking Dave to spit. He ignored me for 45 minutes. <laughs> I just followed him everywhere and he said, like, what do you want? Yeah. I said, just spit in the tube, man. You've been yeah. on a DNA test. You know yeah. how it works, right? Yeah. So he literally just, okay. He turned on his camera, went on Instagram, said, I'm spitting in a tube. I'm going to get a DNA test done. Yeah. He gave it to me. He's been through every DNA test you can imagine, right? Yeah. Uh, he's, he's had a DNA test for $50,000. Wow. He said he learned more from our $400 test than he learned from the $50,000 test because of the interpretation, the, you know, the meaning yeah. of people, yeah. right? So what is biohacking? Dave was obese. He was a Silicon Valley uh, tech guy. I think he built a few companies, sold a few companies. He was a, a tech hacker at one time. Cool. He spent a million dollars because he said that I just can't lose this weight, it doesn't matter what I do. Just trying different stuff that is not available at the doctor. Mm -hmm. Every test you can imagine, flying to Germany. Germany is way ahead of us, by the way, in this stuff. Oh, really? So just doing crazy, crazy, you know, cryotherapy, uh, red light therapy, all this random stuff. Yeah. He then built this thing in his, I've, I've been to his house, he's in Victoria, BC. He moved from Silicon Valley to Canada because he said it's cheaper. <laughs> For sure, and, yeah, I believe it. Yeah. And I've been to his, his barn outside of his farm where he's got all this crazy tech equipment yeah. that he does to himself all day long. Yeah. Uh, that's biohacking. It's, so here's a simple example of biohacking. I could go do cardio every day yeah. because I know that's what I need to work out. Or I could do a super high intensity rotation for 10 minutes three times a week and it gives me the same benefit of doing one hour of cardio a day. Yeah. How is it possible that three or 30 minutes gives you the same benefit as six hours, if you do it six times a day. Yeah. You have to consider all of what's going on in biochemistry. It's not just, hey, I exercise my heart, but I also cause myself a load of stress and inflammation and I abuse my body. Yeah. I also, at a certain point, there's no gain from that tail end, the last 20 minutes versus the first 20 minutes. The impact level goes down, right? Yes. Or if you just sprint like crazy for 30 seconds, and then you run for three minutes, and then you sprint like crazy for 30 seconds, and you, run, and you do that three times, 10 minutes, you'll get the benefit as if you sprinted like crazy for a full 10 minutes. Because your body takes three minutes to come back down. Yeah. Right? Holy shit, yeah. That's what literally biohacking, like you're hacking the system. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I know that if I sprint for, it, for 30 seconds straight, it takes three minutes for my body to get back to like a normal pace. Yeah, so yeah. that's when I sprint again. Versus run on a treadmill for an hour, I'm getting less benefit from that than the 10 minutes I did. Yeah. And the impact of the sprinting, what it does to my hormones, my testosterone levels and all that, it's better to do that three times a week than to run six times a week. The net effect. <laughs> You're making him rethink his whole life. Yeah. Like, holy <laughs> shit, I'm fucking running. But, okay, so is biohacking mainly just like 
touching upon health right now, health and fitness. So, yeah, it's about longevity. Yeah. Right? How do I live longer and stay healthy? Okay. That's biohacking. Okay, cool. Okay. And literally, how do I hack all the processes of my body? Like a coder, hacker would hack some computer software yeah. to literally do things that are shortcuts. Yeah. That's biohacking. Okay. So right? what you guys are doing, you're kind of, is it's kind of... Yeah, we, we feed the, the... So Dave has a company called Upgrade Labs, okay. which is... They have gyms in the U.S. that are biohacking gyms. It's not about fitness. You so go just there. testing and everything. Yeah, yeah, so we... Our genetics tell people what they actually need to do. Okay. Cool. And so they, they, like they go to that gym yeah. Yeah. and then they do... That's insane. Yeah. Yeah. Holy shit. I got to do one of these tests. Dude. Yeah, I got to... Yeah, yeah. You got to figure yourself out. I don't even know if I want to know now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's better you know. Trust me. Ignorance is not bliss. Yeah. Listen... We are the MBH podcast, Money Buys Happiness. Might throw you off with this question, but because we've <laughs> yeah, been, we, we, we have not talked really about any of that. But when you hear, we ask all our guests, Money Buys Happiness, what do you think of the term? What do I think of the term? Yeah. So there's a guy named Dan Sullivan, okay. uh, who is a major sort of in the US consultant to a lot of CEO type guys, right? right. He teaches them, he kind of looks at what they're doing and gives them a few fixes that are major tweaks. And I think what he said is, you don't have a problem if you have enough money. I Meaning there's no money, that, no problem money can't fix, right? Yeah. Yeah. If you have enough money, you don't have a problem. Yeah. So happiness is a whole other thing. Yeah. It comes down to the theme of what we've been talking about. You gotta need to know what to do with it, Yeah. right? Yeah. So you could be doing the wrong thing with it, yeah. trying to buy happiness, which is a different thing. But if you have enough money, money buys happiness, I don't think you go by happiness, but you, you are now armed with a thing that is preventing your happiness. There's no reason where if you have enough money, like Dan Paul Sullivan says, that you should have a problem. Yeah. Fair. Right? Yeah. I like that. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I guess the real answer is money buys happiness <laughs> on your jeans. Yeah. 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 So we're going to send them to you first. And then we have last them. You'll let them know. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yo, we appreciate you having, having you on, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was awesome. Great talking to you guys. Man. Uh, we'll definitely check up on you, too. We we'll definitely want to see what you, you're going to sure. be up to in the next year or so. so um, where, where, where can everyone find you? Yeah. On the, uh, the DNA company.com. Yeah. So just go to the website, the DNA company.com. Everything's there. Uh, through there, if you want to send an email, connect to me. Just ask for me. I'm available. You know. Awesome. Beautiful. Dude, yeah, oh, really, really appreciate it. We learned a lot about Dean too. Yeah, yeah. we should have him back on in October. When Dean's gonna just call you step. for some. Yeah, some yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd love to. When uh, when we'll, we'll speak with you, and whenever we whenever you launch in October, we'll get yeah. you back to talk about that whole yeah, process. Because sure. I'd, lo- I'd love to see how that's going and, and what yeah. that looks we'll like. We'll bring you guys some pills. See what yeah, happens. Yeah, <laughs> there you yeah. Go. Fucking grow through. Man. <laughs> no, listen. Appreciate appreciate your time. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah. No, awesome. Thanks, guys. Cool, Dean. We out.